Hey guys, my name's Random Kenny, and this is a solo speedrun of GTFO's B1 mission from Rundown 1. Now, the main goal of B1 is to collect 12 ID cards from uh, 7 sections, 7 zones in the game. Now, 18 ID cards spawn in the map, and they're distributed randomly throughout all of these zones. So the idea is to progress through every zone and find as many ID cards as possible. Now, since we're trying to do this as fast as possible, we don't really want to go to every zone, so we're kind of looking for an optimal distribution, which is very hard to get. But, uh, this first zone, called the hub zone, which is zone 38, uh, doesn't have any of them. It is purely just a nuisance room, it only has one of each resource in it, and is generally not, not a good time. And it generally seems to have a bit of uh, performance issues, I've noticed. A lot of people seem to, when they aggro this room, uh, the enemy sort of lag, and very frame like their frame rate kind of drops it's very confusing not sure why here uh, I've alerted the room which is always a fun experience but alerting this room in in all honesty doesn't really matter uh, but right now I'm going to be playing ring around the rosy with them all uh, and bopping just to conserve my ammo again it doesn't really matter I was kind of just bored at this point I've, I've run this so many times uh, but I get hit a bit too much, and I'm like, ah, oh, hell no. Nah. You're gonna die tonight, fool. Anyway. So, what is the plan for getting these 12 out of the 18 ID spawns? So, we have, uh, three directions we can go. We have the north section, which is zone 41 and 42, which, uh, both of those zones contain a scout. Then you have the east sections, there's three of them, and each of them, to get into them, uh, require a bio scan in order to get in there, uh, which is a wave defense, essentially. And then you have the west, which requires a key card to get into there, uh, and the those two zones have completely fog, it's completely fog and has a lot of giants. Like, that's almost the majority of everything that spawns. So, but we can't get to the west yet because we need the key. And the key always spawns in the first door to the east. So, you might be wondering, why are we going north then? Well, north is the hardest section for me in this run. Mainly because of the scouts. And usually what you want is a weapon that deals with the scout. But since we're by ourselves, we don't really have the luxury of that. We're mainly looking for weapons that kill things really efficiently. And the SMG and machine gun are amazing at that. So here I'm using the terminal to quickly figure out the distribution of the IDs in each section. And you can... You can list the zones, you can list the commands before the the terminal has finished writing it out, which is really quick, and you can hit up arrow to do the last command, and so basically I'm just hitting up arrow, deleting the last uh, character, and then replacing it with the next zone that I want to check. So that's how I'm quickly able to check all the zones. So right now, the scout is to my right, and he's just got his feelers out. So, I'm taking my time and hacking this box in the meantime. And I found an ID, which was fantastic. So, now, dealing with the scout is basically the top priority. I made that guy go angry, and instead of trying to deal with him, um, I'm content with trying to finish uh, clearing out the room instead, just by going loud. I've saved myself the hassle of trying to fight off the scout wave. By, of course, if you alert the scout, he spawns in an extra wave of enemies, and that's not what we want. That is the, the, the last thing we want, which is why the north section is so hard for us. Uh, this giant here, the best way to 
deal with giants is always have a really physical object that you can hide between uh, because he always tongues the last location that you were at. If the object's semi-transparent, sometimes he can like go through it or curve around it. So I always try to find something that's like really solid to hide behind or around. It usually takes about 18, 19 bullets with the machine gun to take him out. So I'm always trying to make sure I have that. So, so basically now I've cleared out the entirety of area A of this zone. And there's two more areas. But since the scout's gone, it should be generally pretty easy. But this zone does have a lot of enemies. Right here I use the machine gun's flashlight to check down that little bit there. Uh, every gun has a different intensity flashlight. Uh, the melee weapon, as you can see here, the flashlight's very weak. Uh, the machine gun has the most powerful one. Uh, here, you can see me uh, not kill enemies <laughs> and get hit a lot. So, luckily, I managed to kill them all before they cried out, so the area didn't get alert, which is mainly what I was looking for. Plus, I knew there was still a health kit in here somewhere, which is happens to be right here, so I can just heal back up to 80%. Not a not a huge loss here. There's there's plenty of health on this run when you're playing by yourself. Because <laughs> you don't have to share the resources with your dang so-called friends. But uh, we're just clearing up the rest of the room, trying to find that last ID card, uh, which is... By process of elimination, I've checked most spots, and it's right in this one, which is good. So, just gonna clear out these enemies. Uh, kind of, somehow stuff up the last two, which is embarrassing. And then we're gonna go through that big security door to zone 42. 42 is also a scout. A scout zone, which is just fantastic to deal with. Uh, but it is split into two areas, so an A and a B. This A area is very tiny. He can't spawn in there. But what does spawn in area A is just a lot of enemies. <laughs> just a lot. You can see all the glowing that's going on in there. Two, four, five, six, seven. There's about seven guys that you can see just from glowing. Uh, sometimes you get lucky with the amount that are in there. Uh, to be honest, it's probably a better thing that a lot of the enemies spawned in there. It means that the area B won't be as heavily packed. So right now, I'm like, uh, I can't be bothered dealing with this. The sentry has a lot of, it's, the sentry was almost at 100%, so I'm basically deciding to let him have a bit of a go and clean it up. Uh, I I don't let them shoot for too long. I'm using the burst sentry because I mainly want that quick fire rate to sort of stun the enemies whilst I do things. The shotgun sentry is almost always better, but in this case I'm using burst because I just want it to shoot things really quickly. I'm not looking to kill things, essentially. I'm sort of trying to buy time. So there's the toolkit. Uh, there's one of the three IDs from this section. And in here is the uh, medi pack, which I'm gonna just gobble up. Yeah, so you can see like all these resources are just keeping me alive. When you have four players, the resources get spread really thin. So when doing the solo run, the resources really aren't much of an issue as long as you're being able, as long as you're able to clear zones with the resources you get from the previous zone. Now this scout, he somehow heard me jump off that tiny bit of a ledge from the stairwell, from the, the little stairs there. I'm just like, you, you're you kidding me, right? Anyway, this this scout, this scout was a little, a little trigger happy. Like, he goes off once and then look, he goes off again. And I'm just like, oh, come on, bro. He, he has a little bit of a umbrella effect that goes on when he's doing his uh, tentacles. So you can hide under there, and when he's bent down, you can easily get that headshot. So that's what 
luckily worked out for me then. So now this zone has a lot of giants in it as a result of the previous zone having a lot of the small guys. Um, frankly, I don't want to deal with the big guys. They're a huge pain in the ass, but uh, I'm just going through it all. So I know there's a uh, ID and an ammo left in this zone. I kind of want the ammo, but so I got the ID. So we're, we're done for IDs for this zone. I sh probably could have left this zone by now because, to be honest, I, the next zone we're going to, you don't really need too much ammo. But uh, getting to that zone is a whole bioscan wave, which is a lot of shooting. So I was kind of worried about that. Now, there's a, people find that the behavior of the sleepers can be wildly inconsistent. I'm getting pretty familiar with the tolerance of it all. So like, they require a line of sight to get angry. As you can hear, he didn't get angry until he started getting his line of sight on me. So, as long as you're not sprinting, sprinting will automatically make them go straight into their like angry stage walking will only make them go into their their sort of pre-angry stage but if you're walking whilst they're whilst they're like uh doing their sort of like pumping uh they will definitely go angry which is why i always try to walk whilst they're just glowing not whilst they're like throbbing so basically now we're setting up for this and this is a part of the reason why we went north first. The reason we go north is because when you go north first, the enemies spawn over there. And the north area is really big, and it takes them a long time to get to you. Much longer than what they would do if you went straight for the, the door. When, they, when you go straight for the east door, they spawn at your spawn point. And they get to you really quickly. And usually when I'm playing in a four-man, I would go east first because it's so much easier. Everyone just goes on one bioscan, it's done. But when you're by yourself, it's a different story. So there's a there's a lot of different uh, tactics you use when doing solo versus doing four-man. So now we're just doing the, the cleanup. You'll notice I slide a lot you gain a slight bit of speed by sliding. It's very minuscule, and it's, it's almost like not even worth it, but it's a force of habit now for me. So, uh, if, if you hadn't known, there's a way to tell the difference between a naturally spawned enemy, that is an enemy that spawns in a zone, and one that gets spawned during a bioscan alarm or a uh, scout alarm. And that is the, the skin tone of the enemy. You can see here that the enemies are really dark. That means they got spawned in during a, an alarm. If the, the skin tone is like a really white pale sort of color, which you'll see uh, when I open this door, that means they're a naturally spawned uh, enemy. So you can see like, look how white these pasty boys are boys and girls. So here, I didn't kill that guy, and as a result, he got angry and, and told all his friends. So at this stage, I'm just like, okay, whatever. I don't need my sentry too much because the plan for the last zone is to kind of do it stealthily. But I got unfortunate here in the fact that there's three areas for this zone, and all the enemies spawned in the first one. <laughs> So I had to I had to deal with every enemy in that zone, but uh, it could have been a good thing because I managed to deal with all the enemies quickly and I didn't have to haphazardly sort of wander around. So here you can see I'm using uh, the machine gun flashlight since it's the most powerful one in my kit. And now I'm just going through everything and trying to find the three ID cards in this section. and. We have to find that key card that I mentioned earlier, the one that will 
lead us into the west zone. So going through here, uh, I think I said before that most of the IDs spawn in unlocked containers, but they can spawn in locked ones. The key, however, the key always spawns in a locked container. So definitely trying to find a locked container. So I found all the IDs and now I'm trying to find that locked container. So there was still a tool kit and a health kit in here and they could have been in a, a locked container. So I, I got really lucky that I had like a, a 33 to 50% chance of getting the key on my first hack uh, locker. So that saved a couple of seconds. So now the plan is to go straight to the, the west. Uh, and as I looked up on the terminal, the west actually has four IDs. So I don't need to find every ID in that zone. I just need to find three of them. So, but as I said earlier, the west is all fog and it's all giants. Well, a few little guys spawn, but the majority of it's giants. And honestly, there's no point. It's like, I'm at this stage, I'm like, I'm like, this is it. This is the run. I want to get the sub 20 because I'd been trying for it for so long. And I unfortunately got the first, the first unlocked locker was the toolkit. And then this guy gave me a heart attack. He was like perfectly hidden in that little corner. I instead decided to go back and go around because I couldn't see any lockers over there. Uh, trying to learn the locker spawn is sort of a big part of the speed run. Big guy there managed to block his line of sight so he didn't start throbbing. But here, I'll go here and yeah, there's not much I can do. Since it's really foggy, what I try to do a lot is I know where the lockers are. I'll try to ping to see if I can actually find it through the fog. And luckily in this case, I could. So, saw that one there. There's another small little uh, box that spawns here. Couldn't find it. Uh, but I've decided to abandon area A and go to uh, area B. And you can see just how many big enemies there are in this, like, zone. It's really a pain in the ass. I'm crouching past them because I don't want to trigger their glowing stage yet. Usually, when I'm bopping, I just walk because it doesn't matter too much. Uh, but the big guys, I want to get as much time through as possible. There's a locked locker behind me, but I figured that it's a high chance that the last ID would be in an unlocked one. And I know there's a few lockers over here. And there's two IDs that are still left in this zone. Uh, unfortunately, this one was the ammo. And at this stage... There's, there's not even a chance that I'm going to be shooting. Like, if I have to start shooting, the run was over. So I'm making my way over here. And you can see just the handful of small enemies in this level. So if it was just these enemies, it would be fine. But if those big guys get alerted, it's going to be a pain in the ass. So luckily, this locker here, it could have had the health or the ID card, but the chances work sort of in my favor since there was two IDs. And if it wasn't in here, it would have been in the other one. I got the ID, and since I'm trying to get under 20 minutes, I just book it. You can hear all the giants trying to tongue me. There's already three of them have tried to tongue me. And then this guy here, if I did not go to the left here, he would have killed me instantly because uh, if you're in their melee range, they hit you for 40% of your health, and occasionally they can do a double hit, so they can hit you and they can tongue you, and the tongue goes for about 16 damage, 16, 18. So he would have hit me for 56 damage, and I would have just died instantly, and that would have been the run. And I would have cried about it, and I would have been devastated, but... The reason we run at the end is because they cannot get to this spawn in time. We can solo do this extraction before they even get around the corner. And you'll hear at the very end the turret start to target them. So, by the skin of our teeth, managed to do it in under 20 minutes. 
and very happy about that. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, let me know if you want to see more, and I'll see you guys later.